Hello. Yes, is this David? This is he. This is Gary. Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. bud, how you doing? Doing all right. Uh, I, I didn't mean to bother you if you're busy or anything. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm always busy. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure. I'm you're, sure. You're not bothered. You're not bothering me anyway, man. I, 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 no, it's all good. All right. Well, I, let me just say I'm a big fan. I've been a fan for many years. Uh, well, thanks. Yeah, from the uh, first time I heard uh, Last of the Runaways like 30 oh, years ago i man i yeah in, in fact um probably one of my all-time one of my all-time favorite albums i mean really um oh man thanks thanks for saying that i appreciate that yeah it's i wore the tape out i got a cassette tape and i played it like every day and i would you know i'd be working or whatever and i was i was like uh 15 16 something like that and i would just play it yeah non-stop and it was just a good uh album and i, I think and I've said it before, like on Twitter before, I've said, you know, probably to me the most underrated album ever. And I, and I believe, you know, well, I, mean, I mean, it's just good. I mean, I don't think, I think it should have got a lot more attention. And I know the timing of the album had a lot to do with it, you know, and, and uh, what was going on, you know. And um, But I really, yeah, I, the songs, I could, you know, every song on there to me was just awesome, which, you know, that that's a... Uh, like I said, just an awesome album, and uh, which we'll talk oh, about. Oh man, that. thanks. Well, you, you know, you know, it's crazy. You know, what they say: timing is everything in this world. And, right. Right. And uh, unfortunately, that kind of, you know, that melodic rock music and the way economics of the business all hit at the same time. It was like, yeah, you know, just it. It didn't make sense, you know, spending that much money on records, and then and then bands like the Spin Doctors and. Right. Who else? Uh, uh, Nirvana. Nirvana. I mean, they, they, they basically changed changed music, you know, it, and I think it changed it in a great way. Unfortunately, it just kind of it made us instant, instant, you know, extinct. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, unfortunately. Did, yeah, it's not like they sat around and said, "Okay, guys, we're going to put you all over here, and we'll have the alternative over here, and y'all can both kind of work together." Yeah, it was kind of like you're out, this is in. Yeah, like it or pretty like much. It. <laughs> pretty much. Well, yeah, but but yeah. That, I mean that's 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 you know, uh, ev- ev- evolution, you know, that's just kind of what it is. And, and luckily, you know, my brother and I, we just kind of, we, we never quit. We say, to say it, we never quit our day jobs. You know, we always played on records, produced, and, that, and you know, luckily we, we had something to go back to. Yeah. That's all, that's always good to have something to go back to. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, yeah. did, a lot of people didn't though, I think. Uh, but oh, I, know, I, you know, know. I mean, I know. That, and it's sad that, you know, a lot of people think that this guy is set for life because he's got an album out or he's got a song out, you know, and then, you know, then one day it all goes away, you know, what do you do then? Uh, but yeah, it, well, you know. I mean, you know, like, like, any, like you have to, you have to, what, what do they say in, in the military? You, you adapt, you, wait, what is it? There's three. Oh yeah. I, know you, I can't remember. You, you, right. right. Uh, I can't remember, but it's, it, but yeah, you just have to adapt, and, right. and, you know. You can't fight, can't fight evolution. Can't fight technology. You know, just gotta keep moving with it. But, moving. So that, that's that's kind of, that's kind of what, that's what we do. You know, that's what we did. Well, that that was a smart thing for y'all to do. Gotta say. Uh, so uh, so, how old were you when you started playing the drums? Uh, I was in fourth grade when I started. Fourth grade, cool. I got my first my first drum kit. It was a little little uh, Slingerland little Slingerland drum kit when I was in fourth grade. Cool. Used old old oh, yeah. used kit. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Did you I, did you ever uh, beat them to the you split the heads and uh, tore them apart? I mean, I, I used to have some. I I used to play you know play them real hard. I didn't know what I was doing, but I. <laughs> But uh, Not, yeah. no, I I never I didn't play I didn't hit them when I was that little I I didn't play I didn't play them that hard okay. I did I was just... <laughs> no I I was I was raised in a musical family so my my dad my dad was in music um, and my mom was a classical pianist as well and my dad and I said my dad made his, you know living in music and awesome. and I, so 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 I was around and I had I had it wasn't like just like a hobby and I I was around a ton of ton of musicians and players and studios when I was a young kid. So I, I, I kind of figured that it was going to be, you know, I looked at it as a profession, you know, yeah. and, and I, and I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. 
you, I guess you gotta love it, especially, and I guess that's what keeps you going, and that's why you've survived, is because you do love oh, it. Oh yeah, right, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, You're always adapting. I mean, obviously, always adapting to new, new. You know, music, music is a moving target. So it always changes. Always, so you gotta kind of stay up to with what's going down, and, and uh, right. So yeah. that's, that's you know, yeah. Awesome. And your brother, of course, is uh, Dan Huff, is lead singer of Giant, and and he's played with everybody. Like I was looking at some of his stuff too, and it, he's played with everybody. Is there anybody that he hasn't played with on on an album? I think he's done it all. Well, right? uh, he's probably done it all. I mean, I'm sure there's a couple people, yeah, but but no, I mean, he he's he's been he's been with with most of them <laughs> for sure. Right. And uh, so, so he's playing guitar, and you're playing drums. Did y'all ever jam out when y'all were younger and say we need to form a band one day, or did you ever think about that back then? Well, of course, yeah. I mean, you know, you asked when I started playing drums, fourth grade. I started making money in ninth grade as a freshman in high school playing on records. So, oh wow. So yeah, I mean, we, I mean, my brother and I, we, we're best friends, and, and awesome. we, we have literally worked, jammed. We have. Toured, we have played on, we have, you know, yeah. Just in early days, we jam, we jam all the time. But, but we also, we, uh, I guess we were serious enough to actually get up, be able to be paid for it, you know. So, so the jams got less and less, and we we played on, you know, playing records, and yeah, and we always wanted to, to. We didn't, we didn't really, you know, set out to be in a band, but we, but we just, we kind of wrote some stuff on on the weekends, and and. Uh, and it turned into turned into Giant, which right. in a good way. That's awesome. And but before Giant, you were with White Heart. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, we uh, we we had some buddies that were that were. Play, I mean, we actually played for a ton of Christian artists too, as as their backup bands, and and like same thing. We wrote some songs. Um, uh, you know, Dan and I are kind of music cats. We you know we didn't we're not lyricists really, so. So we just wrote music and we ended up getting getting noticed and signed and and uh, did that for a couple of years and wasn't you know wasn't really wasn't we I don't know how to say this it just wasn't really what we what we uh, a long term goals you know in that yeah, band right and uh, um and and we we played on a lot of records in the pop world and we played played on a lot of records in the gospel world and and. Um, and we just we we wanted to make just we different music, you know. So that that's how Giant came about after White Heart. Okay, awesome. And uh, so I think you you left the band and uh, and you started touring with Michael W. Smith, I think. And uh, and I think your brother he wanted to work in the studio, so y'all both kind of went and did your own thing for a while, and then you came together and. Uh, Form Giant. So, how did you meet the other guys from the band Giant? Uh, well, well, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's kind of the story. I mean, um, I was playing sessions too, but I was playing sessions as well. But I, you know, was was working with um, uh, Michael, and I got I got a chance to do some touring with him, which was great. Um, uh, let's see here. I think what else? Um, we when we met. Um, we we had always worked with Mike Brigandello, obviously in Nashville. He was from Nashville. Dan and I were living in LA at the time, so we we worked with um, I think we worked with Mike in Nashville in LA. Dan had met um, what's uh, Alan on a couple. I can't remember the exact project, but they they worked on a couple things together, and so that cause that's kind of how that started. Awesome. And. Uh... So you get together and you you form the band. When did you realize that it, it kind of clicked and you said, "Yeah, we need to, you know, record this album and it's going to be good." And how how did the album come together? Well, we we got um, like I said, we did some demos. Didn't really know what to do with it. We we ended up um, uh, connecting with a guy named Keith Olson who produced um, uh, Fleetwood Mac and a bunch of you know bunch of huge artists and. Right. He, uh, I think we'd all worked with him on on a couple projects, you know, in the studio world. He owned a studio called Goodnight LA, which was in uh, the Valley, 
uh, L.A., a bunch of famous, you know, artists and bands played there. Anyway, he he wanted to he wanted to sign us to a production deal, so we had actually got together and set up in his studio to to record. I mean, basically, what we weren't named Giant at the time, but it was basically that, you know, and and we didn't have a manager, so we kind of we we were in the studio getting sounds and you know ready to kind of record, but we were, we didn't have our infrastructure set up. So, at the advice of a couple of friends, man, you know, hey, um, you probably need a manager before you sign up any kind of production deal or whatever, right. that kind of thing. Right. So, so we we uh, <laughs> we left our gear and we was like, okay, that's a smart idea. So we, we ended up. Uh, we got a manager who was a, Bud Prager, who was a manager of Foreigner, Bad Company, and a couple other big bands, and awesome. and, uh, and and then and then, then we kind of we got our game plan after that point. So it wasn't just a production deal. We kind of we got everything in order, and then then, uh, then we got signed. Um, I can't remember the timing, how much longer it wasn't that much longer. But Herb Albert actually called us from his, his cell phone in the car and. and about 30 years ago, which was way ahead of the time at that time. And, yeah. and, uh, he gave us an offer. Awesome. Wow. He, I remember Dan and I were together when he called. It was, it was wild. Wow. Surreal. That, yeah, that's, I guess that you made your day, you know, I mean, uh, Oh, it's cool. Right. I mean, and at that time, all those bands, there was a lot of good bands at that time, you know, and, and, you know, what's sad is like you said, even though you adapted, you know, and with the alternative music coming, you know, uh, but you didn't see it coming. So many bands out there, you know, and I remember thinking, man, all this good music, I didn't realize that was slowly going to be it, you know, but I, I did appreciate I know, it, man. Bro. I was, I knew that this, you know, was a good time. I knew that the music was just awesome. And like I said, I played the crap out of that, that album, but the last of the runaways though, that, that was your first record. And what, what, are the last of the runaways what did, where did that come from that idea that title and the song and everything what's that um i, I don't know where um uh i mean it obviously came it's one of the lyrics some of the lyrics obviously but um everybody asked like you know how do you get the name and all this stuff and, and then from the, the is, is that that's your boot on the front cover and it and it was i mean it was, it, we we got our name um, after we got signed, we didn't, you know, didn't know really what to call it. And, uh, we, we had seen a picture, um, in a little cafe up in, in California somewhere. And, and it was that picture of a boot and it reminded us of, you know, it just, it was just cool. Yeah. It reminded us of, of us kind of in, in the movie giant and kind of like somebody has suggested, uh, that name and, and with the movie. And so it all kind of went together, kind of fell together. The last of the runaways is, is a, I think one of, I haven't listened to that record in a long time. I think it's one of the lyrics in one of the yeah, songs. Uh, the innocent days. Sure. Innocent days, right? It, yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah you you yeah. know better than I, me. I, b is, believe me. I, I was gonna, I, believe me. I know this album. Yeah. The lyrics. Uh, these are the innocent days. I know we're the last of the runaways. Never, oh, perfect. Never perfect. return perfect. till love takes us home. Yeah. I know it. I know every song by heart. Just saying, <laughs> I love it. I mean, I do. I, I appreciate. It. I just. I. I mean, honestly, you don't realize. I. I love that album. Um, and then the. Um, the cover. I think. I, I think it was the front of the cover. I think it had like this. Uh, uh, like oil well, like this rod well in the background. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. And I. I worked on those later. You know, and those. Those aren't fun. But anyway. Um, but I, so how, how did you, how did y'all decide we want to put a well in the background of this, you know, and, and y'all had the, uh, you had like a jackets and the boots standing there. It was really cool, uh, shot, a cool, uh, picture, you know, for the album. I remember I was like, these guys well, are that, that cool. Was, that was, you know, we were in LA. That was like South of, of the, of the LAX airport, somewhere down there. We had driven by and, and uh, the photographer, I don't remember who took our picture, but, but they, they had suggested a couple of different um, places for, for, you know, for photos. And, and that was just worked out. It worked out with the, with the name, the cover. And I it just, it just worked out really well. Yeah. You know? I, I, I think so too. I remember the first time I saw it, I was, I was impressed, you know, it, it fit with your sound. I mean, it was just really cool. And, uh, 
you know, I liked it. Um, but I remember though, and it kind of confused me, you know, at the time because, you know, there was a, there's another David Huff that's in the Christian music, right? And he was with, uh, David and the giants. And I thought there's David Huff, <laughs> David Huff, and there's <laughs> David and the giants. And this is giant. Did you ever think about that? Or did ever, did anybody ever say, Hey, there's David Huff. Well, you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, we we got, I can't remember, one a long, long time ago. Since, since you know, my brother and I, we played with Amy Grant. And we've worked on all these different Christian records. Right. And somebody from the the Dove Award commit, you know, committee or whatever on the Christian Music Awards got in touch with me and said, hey, we'd like to have you and David Huff present, present an award. It never happened, but. Oh, cool. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because. There's people, you know, not a lot, but some people go, hey, man, you know, David Huff, are you David Huff in, in the Christian rock band? And I was like, no, there's there's another guy, and, and he has brothers too, which is which is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. They're all down in, they're in Alabama or Mississippi or something like that in, in the South. And, yeah. And, uh, and no, it's it, it just, I mean, somebody suggested our name, and, and they weren't from the Christian musical at all. That's where we got our name from. So, <laughs> no, I just... I did, I was never aware of him until till that got brought up. I I didn't know. Oh wow! And I've actually never met him. Okay. David, up. I heard he's a really cool guy. He's obviously really talented. Um, you know, um, but no, I mean, we, I mean, it's just kind of a weird yeah. similarity that was not intentional. It's funny. Yeah, I mean that. But I remember. I think David and the Giants had they went from like Christian to like mainstream or something. But I think they had like a a single out like in the late eighties. And then I'm like, that's pretty cool. And they were playing it on the radio, you know. And I was like, I, I got to check that out. And then I went in like to the store and I saw Giant, and I said, maybe this is, you know. But then I heard, uh, I'll see you in my dreams on the radio, and I said, I wonder if that's the same guys. And I didn't, and I saw David Huff and Dan. I said, it's the brothers, you know, the Huff brothers. You know, I just heard about all this, and you know, I put two and two together, realized it wasn't the same guys, but I re also realized that this is an awesome album. You know, and uh, oh, thanks, man. But the I'll see you in my dreams. It, it, it's it's on all these uh, you know uh, rock ballads, you know compilations, you know, and you see it, you know, mm -hmm. on TV, you know, and it, it just really <laughs> stands out, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, why do you think that song though? I'll see you in my dreams. Why do you think it was such a breakout song? You know, for y'all. Um, I think I think because of the fact like. During that time, you know, um, every every rock band had their um, had their big power ballad, which which is funny because that's probably why rock kind of died a death. Because <laughs> yeah, right. when you when you have Diane, I mean, if you think about it, looking back, you have Diane Warren writing your your yeah. writing your uh, power ballad. It's kind of funny, right? Because right. it kind of goes against everything in, in rock and roll was rebellion and, right. and whatever craziness. And, right. and, uh, so, I mean, I think that's probably why it was popular at the time, because it was, that was kind of what was going on in, in the rock world. Right. But, um, I mean, it, 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 I think it's an awesome song. It's very, very oh, commercial, yeah. very, it was very apropos for the time, you know? Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, like you said, though, I'm, it kind of turned into, you know, processed cheese, you know, like automatic, you know, just, yeah, we, we need a ballad. Boom. Here you go. But yeah, but, you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like I said, you, you, you got people like, you know, Diane Warren writing your song. I mean, it's one thing Desmond Child doing it, but yeah. you, know, you got Diane Warren doing, you know, writing Michael Bolton's songs yeah. and, 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 and Millie Vanilli. And then, then, then they're writing for bad English. And, right. and it, it, so, Right. It's, it's, I mean, she's, she's talented, you know, but it's like, but it's, it's automatic. You can do it for anybody. It's kind of like, there's yeah. no, yeah. It, it kind of goes against, like you said, what, you know, what it's all about. Plus the, the people, the bands that they're writing for, sometimes it don't fit. You know, you go from hard rock into this kind of sweet, sappy, you know, whatever. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like exactly. really? Exactly. <laughs> it's like that all yeah. fit, man. Uh, yeah. I, I know. I know. Well, well, we actually wrote our our song, um, uh, "Seeing the Dream." That that was we wrote that. Well, Alan Pasqua wrote that one in our band. So, so it, it came from the band. That's and that's a but, good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 
But I remember the the first track on there, which I'll remind you. I know it's been a while. Nah, uh, I'm a believer. You know, and it starts off with a guitar. You know, and and it's real, mm-hmm. and uh, and then the drums come in. Um, I know a lot of the songs though. They're I think Dan would play like a little riff or something like that. And then the drums would slowly kind of build, you know, on the song. And then there'd be like a powerful, you know, and that was a, that was that way on a lot of the songs. Did you have a part in arranging the drums and saying, I want it to be this way? How did, what was your part in all that? Well, yeah, yeah, we, we all did. I mean, the, the funny thing is that, that I'm a believer. I, I started writing that song. I was on the start of that. And, and then, and then uh, Dan heard. I, I was writing some demos. He heard that and he goes, "Man, let's let's use this start. Let's write this." So so he he started writing on it and then pulled in a couple more people on it. Um, Mark Spiral being one of our good friends, and, and uh, so it just kind of worked that way because it, it was it was around the loop and it was around to some huge drums and yeah. And, that, and that's just kind of I mean Dan and I like we like I said we've been playing since high school together. So that's kind of that's kind of like our thing, and um, we we had a lot of influences. Out in Van Halen was a huge influence, you know how they, you know the brothers, guitar drummers, kind of same kind of thing. Right. Um, yeah, that's, that's that was that's kind of that, you know, it's just, it's just how we heard and saw different rock music, you know. Right. Yeah, and I can see the similarities. I mean, and y'all two guys are, you know are comparable to the Van Halen uh, brothers. I mean, just awesome sound. I mean, with the, especially on that song, like you said, uh, when Dan is playing that little intro, you know, and I was, man, yeah. I, I was like, man, I gotta, I actually started playing guitar, like seriously about that time. And I, and I was like trying to learn that there was no way I could play that. I was like, ain't no way I could do this, but he, that's, you know, little intro. And then all of a sudden, you know, the drums can like, doo, 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 and he goes, ah, go, you know? And it's just yeah. this, it's, I mean, it's just the, the build up on the songs though, is what I paid attention to is like, there was a lot of guitar at the beginning, the drums would come in and it was really a powerful, you know, sound. It was just a good mix. And, and who else can sing like that and play guitar like that? It's, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. It, I mean, you know? yeah, he, he was, yeah, he, he's, he is crazy gifted, man. And, and uh, it's a funny story that, you know, when we first started at uh, the production deal, you know, uh, Keith wanted a different, um, a different singer. Wow. And we were like, well, the band was like, no, I'm not sh-. I mean, we, we kind of want Dan to sing, you know, yeah. he, he's, he's got a different kind of thing. He's, he's more like Bono, you know, as a singer than, than he was, you know, uh, you know, Michael Bolton or, or yeah. you know, C. Perry. Right, right. You know? Right. He had that, so, that, yeah. But it was unique, and it was it went along with the sound. It was it was a powerful voice, you know, it, uh-huh. and and not easy to hit those notes. I know he, he was hitting some notes. I know that. Uh, I was oh wa- yeah. I was watching some uh, concert footage from that time that was on on YouTube, and I was like, wow, uh, you know, he can do it. Um, oh yeah. And. Uh, so I, I remember, I think at that time, y'all were on some TV shows. It seemed like you were on Arsenio and yep. s- some other shows. It seems like it was Rick, yeah, D- yeah, we, Rick D's or something like that is what I'm trying to yeah, remember. We, yeah. we sure did. Yeah, we we uh, we played on we played on the uh, Arsenio Hall show a bunch. We were kind of one, one of their one of their bands that they would call, you know, and just to get us in, you know, it was actually very 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 cool. Yeah, it's so cool. very cool such an exciting time though you know and, and a lot of people forget I, that's what's cool about youtube you can go back and go oh yeah i remember that you know and um and it seemed like there was more exposure for bands back then it seemed like the record companies actually cared you know back oh, in the yeah. day right it, 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 times yeah. change as you said and, and but you know it would be cool to get back to some of that you know uh which leads us to the pandemic how have you been doing during the uh pandemic you're still staying busy you said so what's been going on there well you know yeah we, we it, it's it's different it's definitely different right. um we we have we have you know you know the studio at the house so we we just work you know we work we just work stay busy and 
you know, the month, the month of March was crazy because, you know, no one knew what was going on with the world. And, and, uh, that was a little interesting, but, you know, the good thing is, you, you know, technology, you can make, make music and records without having to be in, in certain places. And so we've adapted, you know, we do zoom, um, technology is, is great for this, this kind of business. Yeah. You can, you can work remotely right. and not have to be around a lot of people. I mean, we still do stuff with session players and studios, but it's, it's definitely changed, right. you know? Right. definitely change at least you have that ability to do it where you couldn't have done it you know 30 years ago you couldn't have done that but thankfully you've got some, i know yeah, ain't that cool right no you'd, you'd have you'd have to have you know you have to have a two-inch machine you'd have to have yeah you'd have to, it would That'd be a lot it. it's a lot different that's a right. lot different thank goodness right right yeah um, I mean, you know, and, and we, we've all stayed healthy you know during thank goodness during that's this, good. this crazy time and and we're just like everybody you know but but thank God for technology. And exactly. It it, it really makes a difference. Um mm-hmm. and uh so after the album uh, you know, Last of the Runaways, uh y'all took a little break, I guess, and you did uh Time to Burn. Uh, how was that album different than the first album? As far as making it and, and what y'all did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we took a break. We were we actually toured for for a while, a long time, and then and then the difference in in making of the record. But uh, we had we did the the first giant record. We started in L.A. We got a producer, Terry Thomas, who worked on both records. Um, we started. We tried to do a few recordings in L.A. and it was um, it was just kind of, it was just distracting for us. It wasn't uh, the 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 producers on, on his home court, so to speak, you know, he right. made, he was an awesome producer. He just, we, LA just wasn't his thing. So we actually stopped, shipped everything, all our gear shipped, everything, even the B3 shipped everything over to London, which was, oh, wow. and no one would do that now, but we, we shipped air, all our gear and made a record in London. We, we lived there for three months while we made a record and wow. residential studio, which was great uh, farmyard studios. And, so, so that was a cool process, and uh, and then we we flew when we mixed it. We flew once a week. We'd come from L.A., come back to press, and we'd fly once a week to, to do mixes in London, which was crazy for about a, about five six weeks in a row. Wow. So, so the second record, by that time we had moved to Na- back to Nashville. Dan and I moved back to Nashville. Of course, uh, Mike was living in Nashville, but we moved back just because to- our manager was out of New York. Our, we we switched labels. We went to Sony, at a, which was out of New York, and just easier. We were just flying from LA all the time in New York, anyway. And, and uh, so we moved to Nashville, and then we actually made the second record in Memphis, Tennessee. We we um, all planned just we to live in Memphis. We uh, you know it's just easier away from home just yeah. to, to to be a band. Right. Um, because of sessions and all that kind of stuff just kind of got right. strike. So we, we moved into the Peabody Hotel, which was the owner is a friend, and, and he owned the studio that where we recorded. And we, we recorded the second record in, in Memphis for two, a couple, two, three months. Awesome. Wow. And uh, I remember, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to remember, I think I saw an ad for uh, the album Time to Burn, like in one of these rock magazines, and I was like, oh, yeah, Giant. And he had the little logo with the G and the little triangle looking thing, I think. Oh yeah. And uh yeah. and the guy the stunt guy, I guess, on the fire, like flying through the air. <laughs> and I was like, yep. this is gonna be cool. I, I remember being excited. I remember I went to the mall and bought the cassette. Oh, how cool, man. And how I cool. And it was just real I remember I listened uh, I was I think I was with my brother and I was sitting there. I think he went inside. I said, I'm gonna stay in here and listen to this album and I listened to the whole album sitting in the car. <laughs> but uh and I was really impressed uh, with the sound too on this one, uh, and the uh, uh, which you know what was it chained and uh, stay uh, was a couple of yeah. songs that were and I remember the video I think stay was I think you were on a beach or something um, yeah 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 and, yeah yep. and and so how how fun was it making these videos uh, did did you have a good time making the videos. Oh man, man, we always had fun making the videos. We always had a lot of fun. Um, 
you know, in between, in between, we, we would usually do them in between tours and stuff too, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was always fun. I mean, it make, you know, that's part of, that's part of the art part of the, of the world. And, and, uh, I mean, they, they were it was a lot bigger production back then, you know, doing videos. It was, it was definitely different than now. Yeah. Because of the tech, you know, technology, once again, technology, but yeah, no, we know, dude, we, 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 we had always had fun, especially when it was less con- conceptual and more kind of, performance based we we were better with that <laughs> yeah more natural right right we were not we weren't actors i remember i i think it was yeah yesterday i was watching some of the videos i saw um well the I, i'll see you in my dreams it was yeah it was like one of those acting kind of things and y'all look really yeah. serious i think you had this look on your face like sadness or something i was like you know this is drama you know this is good but uh, what 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 was? <laughs> but I liked it was cool. You had the you had the big hair and everything. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, remember that? Oh yeah, the good I always old, said that. Always. The good, you like the big oh, hair, yeah. don't you? Uh, <laughs> but uh, what did. what was? We did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's cool, man. Um, that song, but the video for that for I'll see you in my dreams. It, was that like an idea? Like, did somebody have an idea, like a storyline, and said we want to put that with the song, or did they come up with the the idea? on their own how oh to, yeah to... yeah that you know that that was that was back in in, when, in the days when when you know when you did videos it, you you hired a, a video you know you hired you hired a guy and, and then they would come up with a storyboard and all that kind of stuff so that was that was not us i mean that obviously it was that's not our strength right so yeah you know it, we, you'd, you'd hire somebody and they, they'd come up with that stuff hey i liked it. it it's cool though it's cool to go back i always like to to have the video with the song and kind of remember and, and, and think about it, you know, but, but I didn't see the video till oh, right yeah. after I think I'd already, you know, they say what video killed the radio star and all that stuff. I always have this imagery in my mind. So a video does kind of spoil it to a degree, but if you've got an imagery in your mind, you're thinking, Oh, this is what happens. And this person, you know, I'll see yeah. you in my dreams, you know, it was like, I remember listening to it. I think it was, I know it was eighty nine, ninety, and spring of ninety when I when I first heard the song, and uh, you know I was just visualizing somebody, you know, going to sleep and thinking about you know the good old days or something like that, you know. But yeah, you know, and, and just pondering over, you know, the lost love or something, you know. But it, yeah, but that's what I like about bands with the imagery, the songs. There's harmony there, and I know you sing some uh, backups and. Uh, Mm-hmm. And the whole, it was just a whole package. I mean, you had the great guitar, the bass, drums, keyboards, you know, just singing. It was just a whole package. That's, to me, that's a band. That's, that's like I'm a big Journey fan. So you've got that same kind of band, you know, that's got, it fills in the parts and it fits the songs. And everybody is a talented guy in the band that stands out and it, you know, it makes it, every, you know, everything's better, you know, and it's like, whoa, this is good stuff, you know. Well, well, I appreciate that. Thanks. I mean, yeah, we, we, we were, you know, we wanted to be, you know, we, we weren't just a, we, we weren't, weren't a party band. We were, we were a band that, you know, that loved and was proud of music. You know, we, we right. wanted to make sure that, that the, the music, you know, stood up there and, and, and we, we liked, we liked, you know, we, we got, we got compared to Toto when we first started, oh, which wow. was, which was, awesome. um, it was, you know, was like, oh, thanks. You know, get compared to somebody like that was crazy. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean but I, I put y'all up there, too. I mean, it, you know, as far as sound, I mean, that, and y'all had a unique sound, I believe. You know, and I think it, it's just something that really stands out in my mind that I think if people would go back and just listen, I think there would be a new generation of fans that go, man, this is, this is awesome stuff. You know, this is, this is real music. And that's the name of my podcast, but I mean it's real. It's not cheesy. It's not overly done. It's just perfect, you know. And and uh, you know that's just how it is. Um, oh well, dude. Well, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Yeah, you're... you know, it, it, there there is a power to rock music that you know we, we don't really see it a lot. You know, and if you go see a band live, you know, this is obviously crazy because no, there's no live music right now. But right, you know, there there's there's a crazy power to it and. And of course, you know I, I miss it because I, I I got the chance to be in it. And it was yeah. awesome. Right. And yeah. There's a lot of a lot of young kids who have not heard this kind of music and like you know there's a, you know 
Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. they'll get exposed to it. That's the beauty of technology. T- you know, TikTok or you know YouTube or Instagram. People start hearing bands they've never heard of. That's I just right. saw something the other day where this this guy this this guy was skateboarding, drinking a uh, um, what was it? Uh, cranberry juice and oh, yeah, played yeah. A, a Fleetwood Mac that's song. Right. And that thing just blew up. It sure know? did. And then, and then Mick Fleetwood jumped on and did the same thing. Which was, I thought it was really really cool. Yeah, really well, cool. So, so what if I get like on a skateboard and I sing, I'll see you in my dreams and I go down the road, you think it'll take off? <laughs> I'll drink some Dr. Well, Pepper or something. Yeah, I, I think so. As, as long, Wouldn't it be as long cool? As you don't fall and get hurt, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. And then, then you'll be on the best fails, you know, you don't want that. <laughs> right. I just, uh, I'm become famous. Yeah, but that, that's cool. Um, So, uh, so after those albums, Y'all, I guess, did y'all disband after that? Did y'all realize this ain't working out? How did, what happened after the second album? Well, yeah, when, when uh, you know, when the music industry changed, uh, we, you know, we got offers to play over in Europe and clubs and stuff. And, and we had been playing, like, you know, um, you know arenas. So, and, and, and it's not like a pride thing. It's just like, you know, when, when you go, okay, you're going to go over there and scrape together some money to tour and, and it was just an easy business thing for us. We all we all were studio players, yeah. so it's like you know, well, it was easy. We didn't want to go tour in clubs and you know scrape by when you're going. Oh, what do I have? You know, this, I can play in these records. <laughs> it was a no no brainer. Right. You know, we, we obviously missed it, but but you know, like I said, Dan and I, we were like, man, we like we didn't quit our day gigs. You know, and we at the bottom, end of the day, we were musicians. You know, yeah. we're musicians, lovers of music, and as long as we can create, we just had to adjust and adapt and overcome. That's 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 what that was, the military thing. Right. Adjust, adapt, adjust, and overcome. There you, you go. Know, there you go. That's really good. That's a good, uh, especially for these days. You need to tattoo that on her arm or something. Um, Man, right? I, absolutely. You know? <laughs> I mean, and, and look, look, music, music's a gift, and and it's just, you know, we don't we don't ever take it. None of us never took it for granted, and we're grateful as as anybody in this world, and you know. Just, as and, long as we can, you know, make music, we're you know we're happy and blessed. Well, that's it. You got to do it. I yep. mean, you mean you when you look at it that way, and you you know that hey, it's it's a gift, and God gave you ability, and you use it to the best of your ability, and you yep. always remember that, and you stay humble, and you're still doing it. Um, you know, nothing wrong with that. So, um, and then after uh. A while, I think, yeah, you you and Dan played with John Schlitt, who I just had on here uh, about a week ago. Oh, sweet. Yeah, and uh, I was thinking about you, and uh, I think that's how I was thinking about you, I believe. But I remember the albums oh, you, you, sweet. you did, uh, his his uh, so, uh, two solo albums in the 90s, you worked on that. Can you tell me a little bit about working with John? Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember how it came about, but... Yeah, we, we had a great time. We played on it and we and we co produced it. So yeah, man, we, we awesome. had we had a good old time. John's a, what a sweet dude, man. Oh, a yeah. Talented guy, a, a, just a great person. And and uh, we had a ball, man. So we got to kind of do do what we did with him. You know, it was a lot of fun. And then we, then we had, I think we played one show with him. Oh, cool. I remember one show we played somewhere downtown Nashville to when that record was going to come out for some reason, I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, man. Awesome. John's a great guy, man. Yes. Great guy. It was cool talking to him. And, and, and that's, that's another thing, you know, a talented guy like that's been around all these years and he, he never forgets where he came from, you know, and, and people like you, you know, that have the ability when you blend that together, I mean, that, what more can you ask for from, from uh, you know, what do you want from people? You know, that's pretty you know pretty mm-hmm. awesome stuff. Um, and then after uh, after a few years, I guess in the right around the two thousand something like that, uh, Giant comes back together for Giant Three. So how did you decide to come back to do another album? Well, we 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 didn't really come back. We got asked to do a record um, from uh, we we had some acquaintances in Italy and um, they have a label there, um, Frontier Records, and they offered us something. Um, Dan was, has it sung for, you know, he hadn't been singing for, you know, 20 years, I guess, or something, right. 15 years. <laughs> right. 
So it was never, never going to be a possibility of him singing. It, it, it wasn't, gonna, there's no way it could happen, you know? Right. And so, so, um, we, we, I think we did, I think we had some other records that, that, that weren't finished that were started. I think that's kind of where that group, where that project came from. Right. And then you had uh promised land, right. And think in 2010 and, and, uh, yeah, that, that, that was a different, a different, uh, group of guys in giant Mike and Mike and myself originals. But then we, we had a guy, Terry, um, Terry, uh, what's his, um, Brock. Okay. Terry Brock was saying lead on that one. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. That was a, that was fun. A yeah. project to make. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I was listening to that earlier and that's, that's good stuff too. Um, in is, is that, is that behind you now, or is that something you will ever go back to, or try to do something again with with the name Giant? Well, it's funny you ask, because because um, uh, we we may be making a, a another record. Awesome! Wow. With a diff, different different uh, um, group of guys. Yeah. My, Mike and myself are always the kind of the constant, and um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're we were talking about that, you know, the other day. Trying to think about doing another one. That's, that's cool. That 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 is cool. That's I think a lot of the fans, you know, that's what they want to hear. That, you know, when it brings back memories, you know, that nostalgia quality. You know, the people remember the good old days, and they want to hear some of that new music. New music is always good, especially these days, you know. And I think that uh, a band like Giant is is something that people would really uh, appreciate. I, I've been seeing like online, you can go on YouTube and look at some of the older videos, and they're like. You know who's who's here in in twenty twenty. Listen to Giant, you know, and, uh-huh. and and it sticks with them. You know, it, fans are loyal. You know, they they love the music. They wait for years. They hope that hey, there's some new music coming out from you know, and they wait and see. Uh-huh. And that same here, I'm like, man, Giant. I wish they would do something else, man. I kind of got the the urge to hear and wouldn't mind seeing you play in person, you know, one day. But uh, oh yeah. Well, you know, we we actually played. We actually did a giant thing. I can't remember four or five, four or five years ago, whatever. Awesome. We actually played for a guy's benefit. A guy who lost lost his home, and he, one of his favorite bands was Giant. So he asked us to play. And we actually um, Dan didn't sing. We we got a buddy to sing, um, but but it was Dan and I and Mike, and we we got a keyboard player to play with us and a singer, and it was it was we played in Nashville. Awesome. At, at a, at a club down uh, a little small club it was fun it was a lot of fun we just did three songs just try to help him you know you yeah. know out of his bad situation yeah it was fun it was it was good good time wow you need to do that more often is that something you I know. planning on you need to plan that with it get a new album when all this junk is over the pandemic you can do another show like that how about that absolutely man absolutely man, i would love to that, i think a lot of people would be uh eager to see that i, I know i would I, I have to be there see i'm i'm, I'm looking <laughs> well i'm thankful that uh, i got to talk to you i won't keep you or anything but i man i just want to say it, for 30 years i've been a fan and you're an awesome guy i mean i know you know drummer wise and music wise you know and it's been fun you know to talk to and your personality is awesome too and i know you're a good guy uh, and i appreciate oh, you man, man. I appreciate that and I, and I, Gary, thank, thanks, thank you for your time. Thank you for your interest in, in, in you know, giants was is and was a special part of, of our lives, you know. And I, we appreciate your kind words, man. It means a lot. Yeah, appreciate you, bud. Yeah, and I will be looking for you in the future, man. <laughs> and I hope uh, all the best to you, you know. And uh, we'll... thank you. you, you too, man. Stay safe in, in all this craziness. Hopefully, uh, the world, the, the music world, and the world get back to a little bit more normal thing this next year, 2021. See what it has in store for us, you know? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping for the best. Well, I appreciate it, man. All right, Gary. Thanks so much, but have a great day, great weekend, and, uh, and we'll chat soon. And you too, man. God bless. All right, bud.